Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to graph the position of an object that is speeding up or slowing down, so accelerating. We're going to start with our position equation, which is x equals half of the acceleration with time squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial position. You may have noticed that this equation with a t squared and a t in it looks an awful like uh, an awful lot like a quadratic equation and it is a quadratic equation. So let's write the more familiar quadratic form for ourselves with ax squared plus bx plus c. Maybe that'll help us relate all of these things. Um, so basically this is a quadratic equation where your c term is the initial position, your b term is the initial velocity, and your a term is half of the acceleration. So if you're familiar with graphing um, y equals x squared plus you know x plus that kind of equation, then you should be able to graph position equations if you write it in a math friendly manner. Let's do an example. Let's say that you had an initial position of, I don't know, 4, an initial velocity of, how about negative 1? Eh, let's do negative 2. That's easier. Negative 2. And an acceleration of, I don't know, positive 3. Okay, if I was going to use this information to write a graphable position function, um, I might write it like this. Half of the acceleration 3 is 1.5 times t squared. Okay, so that's the half of the acceleration times t squared. Plus, or I'm sorry, minus, because it's a negative 2, minus 2 times t plus 4. Okay, so this is a graphable equation. It's very simple for me to see how I would graph that. Um, and let's practice real quick. So sketch a position versus time graph, and we'll mark the initial position at 4 right here. Um, let's talk about that negative 2. Uh, a lot of people kind of confuse what the b term in a, in a quadratic is. So uh, let's look at one. Okay, so basically, whenever you are looking at the quadratic equation, or a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, um, c is pretty obvious. It tells you what the y-intercept is. Um, it's like b on a y equals mx plus b. Um, but the b term is confusing for people. So the b term is really the slope of the line if it was linear. Because um, if I got rid of the ax squared, I would just have bx plus c, where b is sort of like m for slope. Uh, and then, of course, a is, you know, how smiley face or frowny face your function is. So when I increase my intercept and then I increase my slope or decrease my slope, the b term, it's pretty easy to know what's going on. But when I introduce an a term, things get a little bit confusing. So let's say I have a positive a term. So now if I move the b term, you see how it sort of translates around. But for us, what we really want to focus on is the fact that this b term is telling us what the slope at the y-intercept is. Let me, let me zoom in and tell you what I mean. Okay, so here maybe this will help, us, help you see what I'm talking about. When I'm at 0 for b, it means that my initial slope right here, my initial slope is completely flat. It's 0. And then if I make it negative, then the slope at my y-intercept is that negative 1.2. Um, or like right here, it could be positive 2. So the b term in your quadratic tells you about the initial steepness um, at the y-intercept, or the slope at the y-intercept. All right, so let's go back to our uh, example. So I've marked my initial position, x0, at 4. And now I know what to do with this initial velocity, the negative 2. It's going to tell me that right here, I have an initial negative slope. Um, and with these little boxes, I can kind of give myself a, a negative 2 for that slope. Okay, so that tells me what, this, what the slope of the curve is going to be at that intercept. A describes for me whether or not this is going to curve up uh, or curve down. Smiley face up or smiley face down, right? So positive A term, smiley face, negative A term, frowny face. You could, uh, you could graph this and, and learn how to sort of figure out exactly how curved um, your a term makes your function, but I'm just going to sort of guesstimate, you know, give myself a nice little sketch. So I know it starts off with that steepness, and then it's going to smiley face. Great. So that's an example of how you can sketch a graph with a position equation.
So we can do a lot of things with this. Um, it's really helpful to be able to look at things like minimums and maximums on position functions because, you know, at the minimums and the maximums, the uh, slope is zero, so the speed of the object, the velocity, is zero. But what I want to show you right now is how to use this um, graphable method to solve really difficult physics problems where objects are colliding. Let's, let's get started. Two train cars are 140 meters apart driving toward each other on the same track. Car A is going 54 meters a second while car B is going 68. Both trains hit the brakes at the same moment. Car A has an acceleration of 8 meters per second squared while car B has an acceleration of 12 meters per second squared. How far does A travel before coming to a stop or hitting B? So this is like the classic, you know, problem in physics that drives people crazy and it's in all kinds of cartoons and people's heads start spinning. Let's, let's use graphing to make this simpler for ourselves. So to make a graphable equation for each object, we first need to write down the information about the object that we know. So I'm going to do a little quick sketch. Look at that. That's a train car. It's a box. It's a box car. Okay, A, B. Initially, they are 140 meters apart. I can, I can mark this a couple of ways. Um, I can say that car A is at 0 and B is at positive 40, or B is at 0 and A is at, neg at negative 140. I'm going to choose to write that a is at 0. To do that, I'm going to say x a naught, the initial position of a, is 0. And that makes the initial position of b, x, boo, not 0, I'm crazy, 140. OK, good. Now let's talk about the fact that they're driving towards each other. I'm going to indicate the initial velocity, call that v a naught of a, and the initial velocity v, b, not v, boo. For each object, I'm going to point the arrows towards each other so that I can start to see a is moving to the right, b is moving to the left. Now, when I write down the values for these velocities, that right and leftness is really important. For a, in order for me to indicate that this object is moving right, I would need to say that this is a positive 54 meters per second. For b, to indicate that this is a leftward velocity, I need to write negative 68 meters per second. All right, now let's deal with the accelerations. They both hit the brakes. So in order for A to slow down, the acceleration has to be in the, we'll call that AA, has to be in the opposite direction of the initial velocity, which means that if the initial velocity is positive, my acceleration has to be negative. So for A, the acceleration of 8 is a negative 8 meters per second squared. Likewise, for B, in order for B to slow down, the acceleration, which I'll call AB, has to be in the opposite direction of its initial velocity, v boo. And if the initial velocity is negative, then that means my acceleration must be positive to get in the opposite direction of that initial negative velocity. So that's a positive 12 meters per second. Squared. Okay, so I did the hard part. I wrote down all of these variables. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this general form of half the acceleration with time squared plus the initial velocity with time plus the initial position, and I'm going to write a graphable math-friendly equation for car A and car B, which sounds like Carbies, like, like Arby's. So for A, half of the acceleration is negative 4, so negative 4 t squared. The initial velocity is a positive 54, so plus 54 t. And the initial position is 0, so I don't need to add anything else. Also, I hate that 4, so I'm going to redo it. Okay. For xb, the position of the second car, half of the acceleration would be half of 12, or positive 6 t squared. Then I would do the initial velocity times time, or in this case, negative 68 t and the initial position of a positive 140. Okay, so now I have my two math-friendly equations. At this point, I'm going to get out my graphing calculator, and I'm going to go to y equals, clear anything that's there, and put in my equations. So for a, I've got negative 4, negative 4. Uh, we'll use x instead of t. You could change it to t if you want, but it's not necessary plus 54t, or we'll call that x. So that's the first equation. Okay, then I've got 6x squared 
minus 68 x plus 140. All right, now let's graph it. Okay. Whenever you get a, a window that looks weird, there are a lot of different things that you could do. First, you could go to the window and try and manually enter in minimum and maximum values um, with an older calculator like this. Or you, sometimes you can get away with clicking zoom uh, and go down to zero, which is zoom fit. We'll see if that works. Perfect. So guess what? They collide. It's 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 not good for anybody. Okay. So how do I find that collision? How do I figure out how far A has traveled um, by the time that it hits train B? Well, on your graphing calculator, you have a certain function called intersect, um, and you click second calc five, which is intersect. Then you go to the left of the intersection press enter, that's the first curve, and to the right, press enter, that's the second curve. Um, I never guess, I just press enter. Uh, and this tells me that the intersection is x equals uh, 1.28, y equals 62.66. So the x is actually our time axis, so that would be 1.28 seconds is when they hit. And the position, uh, the position is relative to a, because we said a started at zero. Um, so a went 62.66. If I needed to figure out how far B had gone, I would just take 140 and subtract that 62.66. So let's write this down. We will sketch our position versus time graph. Here's car A, and there's car B. Um, we could write 140 here so that we know car A starts there. And then I'm going to do a little dotted line to indicate this intersection. So that was one point, let's say three seconds. And this was what 62.7 meters, six, six, so we'll round it up to 0.7. Drawing this type of picture usually is acceptable to, to show your work. It shows me that you know that they collided in that part in that spot. And then you could verbally write um, a goes 62.7 meters before collision. A lot of L's. Um, alternatively, if you did not want to graph this to solve it, you could set these two equations equal to each other. Negative 4t squared plus 54t equals 6t squared minus 68t plus 140. Okay, so you could set those two e equations equal to each other um, and then solve for time. Now, the problem is that if you try to solve for t in this equation, you are going to have a quadratic, which means you would need to use the quadratic formula to actually get an answer for the time value. Um, and the second answer that you get out of that quadratic formula would actually be later on when these two would collide again. Um, it, so it, the value the value that is higher than 1.3 would be your second answer to that quadratic formula. Um, you wouldn't include that because it would be a real number, but not like an actual real event. Because once the two trains collide, nothing happens after that. Um, but if for some reason they came to a stop and continued their accelerations, and they were on different tracks, so they like passed each other, then kept slowing down. Eventually, they would go into reverse and pass each other again. Um, but anyway, you can totally do that. You can totally solve for t algebraically with the quadratic formula and then plug it back into one of these position equations to find the position uh, that they hit. But it's a lot easier to just use your graphing calculator. Um, and why not? Because it's awesome. Let's do one more. Kid A is running from the Karma Police. He has a 10 meter head start and is running 0.8 meters per second. The police are running 2 meters per second. They both begin to speed up at a rate of 0.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so they both have that acceleration. Do the Karma Police catch Kid A? If so, far, if so how far did Kid A run? Well, so let's, let's just set this up. Um, and you can draw a picture for yourself if you want. Here's the, uh, the Karma Police. Here, they're exciting. 
They've got little hats on. That's the Karma Police. And there is Kid A. Right there. Running away from them. Okay, so in this case, they're both running. Um, you know what? Let's call the Karma Police B, just like we were doing last time, so it's kind of easier to keep track of things. You would say the initial velocity of A, initial velocity of B, um, and let's deal with their positions. So the initial position of B, the initial position of A. Uh, Kid A has a head, head start of 10 meters, so we'll write 10 meters, and let's say that the uh, Karma Police then start at zero, and then the initial velocities of A, so the initial velocity of Kid A is that 0.8 meters per second, and the velocity of the Karma Police, 2 meters per second. Um, they would both be positive since they're in the both direction. They're both going in the same direction. They're not running at each other. Okay, then they both speed up, which means they both are going to have an acceleration. Um, and those would both be positive of 0.2 meters per second squared. Okay, great. Do the Karma Police catch Kid A? If so, how far did he run? Okay, well, let's write our graphable equations for these. Um, for A, again, you're going to have half the acceleration with time squared, plus the initial velocity with time, plus the initial position. For, so for kid A, half of the acceleration is 0.1 t squared, the initial velocity 0.8 times t, and then the initial position 10. For B, the karma police, you would have 0.1 t squared also, plus 2 times t, plus nothing. Okay, so now let's graph these. Okay, so for the first equation, point one x squared plus two x, uh, and that's it. And for equation two, point one x squared plus point eight x plus ten. Okay, now we graph and hope our window looks right. Oh, this is going to be a terrible window. So, ooh, I don't like that at all. Um, you know, let's let's see if zoom fit works. Sometimes you just want to do six Z standard because that goes to the standard window. Okay, let's see if zoom fit works for us. Mm. Not quite. So if I'm this close, I can go to zoom out. You can try and get closer to the intersection if you want. It sort of centers the zoom out that you're going to have. Maybe you have a fancy calculator and you can see this a lot easier. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> the karma police catch kid A. All right, so this is the graph that we're going to sketch to show our work. Uh, let's go ahead and do second calc intersect to find where they collide. So first curve to the left, second curve, go over to the right, guess. I'm just going to click enter because I don't care to guess. Okay, so at x it equals 8.33, that's the time. Um, they intersect at 23.611. So let's, real quick, let's write this and um, uh, let's sketch this and then we'll talk about what our actual answer is. So x versus t, uh, we started one line like that. If you want, you can write xb. And then here is XA, who gets caught. Um, and XA started at 10. Okay, so this intersection was at time 8.3 repeating uh, and was at position 23.6. So this means that the Karma Police went 23.6 meters. And to figure out how far Kid A went, you would need to take that 10 away. So Kid A ran 13.6 meters before getting caught. OK, congratulations. You now know how to graph a position function for an object that's speeding up and use that to calculate really confusing things like intersecting objects. You are so awesome. You are so great. 
you are the king or the queen or the cat or the dog, whatever. Congratulations, you did it. It's over. Good night.